executive producer, creator, and showrunner, Matt Walpert. Then we have executive producer, creator, and showrunner, Ben Nadivi. Executive producer, Meryl Davis. Executive producer and creator, Ronald D. Moore. Joel Kinnaman, who plays Ed Baldwin. Chris Marshall, who plays Danielle Poole. Chantal Van Santen, who plays Karen Baldwin. Ren Schmidt, who plays Margot Madison. Eddie Gathegi, who plays Dev Ayesa. Coral Pina, who plays Alita Rosales. Jody Balfour, who plays Ellen Wilson. Casey Johnson, who plays Danny Stevens. Sonia Walger, who plays Molly Cobb. And Cynthia Wu, who plays Kelly Baldwin. Yeah. All right. This isn't a show about good guys and bad guys. You know, that's something we, from very early on, we're like, we all have a little good and a little bad in us. And I think, obviously, the good, we hope the good comes out eventually. But I think we're more interested in complex characters. And that's what we try to explore on the show. It's the kind of show that you can look back at season one and see the steps that we laid in to get to where we are now and when we continue. And I think that is the unique nature of the show is, is you know, we're telling people's lifetimes, the good, the bad, and the ugly sometimes. Yeah. But really, that's, that's been fascinating for us. One of the most important things was in the alternate timeline that women took their rightful place in society. Um, <laughs> And just had an equality, and I, I even look at this panel now, and it's our cast is is female dominated, um, and I think we're all so proud of that. And, and there's still struggles, and and still, you know, it, it's not easy, and everyone still has to fight for what they want. But I just love the fact that we have so. I mean, we have a female president, a, a female head of NASA, you know, entrepreneurs, um, heads of science. It's just. Across the board, I think uh, we're also pleased that we're showing a very realistic um, uh, place for women's society where it should be. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> um, it's really cool to get to have those conversations like Danielle has with Ed, where she's in season two, where she's like, it's not enough for me to just have gone to Jamestown. I need to command a mission. Um, and we see it again in season three, where Danielle is fighting like hell to be the first to go on Mars. And even when Ed is given the job over her, and she says, like, if you slip up for one second, I'm gonna be there to sweep the leg. And she swept the leg. Um, but that, that experience of me, Chris, getting to play a character who is like, has agency in her life and is um, taking her life into her own hands and asking for what she wants. I, I, I'm so inspired by that and I'm so grateful that these guys have created this world where a woman can be this sort of billionaire tycoon with the first hotel on the on the moon and, and or, or, or in Space, orbit yeah. um, and all and the head of the NASA agency and the leader of the free world and I just think that um, if we can, I think that television can be 
sort of an ideal of what the world can be like and if we can represent how women can empower themselves and what they look like in leadership positions, even if it affects the real world just a little bit, then we've done our work. Walking into Mission Control every year, or into NASA every year, I'm just like, stop, y'all. Stop, <laughs> this is so good. So good. <laughs> so good. Ben and I had this conversation of like, how much do we actually change and how much do we think that we change? Um, and kind of playing with that each season is so interesting, especially for Karen, because of course on the outside it seems like she's changed so much, but sometimes I think she's just evolving more into who she's always been and being her more authentic self that she denied. You asked me how was it like to join the show. Like, this is the fam for all mankind, F-A-M. They're a family. Everybody was just so lovely and Joel. I've never been on a show where the number one dude comes up to you in between takes and says, I love what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. It's a safe space to explore and create. And the work that they all do is tremendous. I'm, I'm lucky. <laughs> I had a blast. I love action movies personally. And so when Seth, our producer, called me and said, we're going to put you up in stunts and wires and give you time to practice flying in zero G, I was so excited. I went out and bought my own stunt pads. <laughs> um, and I was like, harness me up. I want to live up here. It was so exciting to finally you know, step into the shoes of an astronaut. When you're on a show, it's a lot of eyes, and all of a sudden you see that, like, okay, this is, this is my chance to, to really show what I can do. I think the fear that comes in is also that, you know, if, if, you, get, if you get material that really could make you fly, and what if you fail? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a scary thing to, to really get an opportunity, and, and this season, Casey really got an opportunity, and um, and it was very cool to see how you know he worked through his fear and then really murdered it. One of the most, I mean, genius things that I feel like our writers um, and show creators did was they created a young woman who has such intense, such an intense vision of what is right and what is wrong and what is hard work and what is not, and when she looks at her mentor and just feels utterly betrayed by what he did in, uh, in pursuit of science, um, she makes, she kind of draws a line in the sand, but that line in the sand kind of backs her into a corner throughout season two and into season three because she says, I will never step over this boundary. And then the choice is, uh, do I betray my country and my space program in order to not step over this boundary and have innocent people die? And then I think from there, it's really just beautifully laid out by you guys. And I'm not just blowing smoke. Truly beautifully <laughs> laid out that she keeps kind of having her feet put up to that line and that fire. And it's all the more painful when it involves this relationship. I think our story reminds you, like, it is aspirational in that way, because in any place where there's been loss, grief, setback, um, there has been room for progress and change and growth exponentially, whether it's in technology, space, personal character stories, and to live in that world where we can see personal choices or bigger company choices that might be um, perceived as a failure and yet overcome to progress and that it isn't always about winning that um, moves things forward is a really good lesson that we can each take into the world today. Mm -hmm. We're going to the 2000s. We have an official season four pickup. Mm -hmm.